Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. I like to get really close and then do like a creepy whisper. Okay. Obviously. We're going to be talking about menus, paths, and breadcrumbs. It's a pretty simple topic. You would almost think that Drupal would do it well out of the box. But you may have found it doesn't. So uh, hopefully I'm going to give you some tricks and tips to make perfect menus, pads, and breadcrumbs without doing a lot of extra work. And hopefully it won't take a whole hour. How hard can it be? And then we can move on with our nights and not be here forever and have, you know, no more troubles. That's me. I didn't put a picture because I, you can already see me. My name is Jody. I am the CTO of ZivTech in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. I'm also the co-founder of ZivTech. We have about 25 or 30 people there now. Um, I've been doing Drupal for almost 10 years. I'm basically a glorified developer, um, but I am very interested in good site building. I do a lot of training, architecture. Um, mostly I focus on my team and trying to ensure the quality of everything that we do. And so if one of the things that I fixate on is the quality of our IA. Because I think when you're you know, making a website, it's pretty important to get that right. Oh, so these slides have some trickiness to them. So as I go through the slides and tell you about different things, it's going to, the slides themselves are hopefully going to reflect the harmony that I'm trying to tell you you should have on every site. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is menus. And so I'm showing you an example of a menu at the top of the page. And then we're going to talk about paths. Oh, I also snuck in an extra menu on the side. Sometimes you can display the menu, uh, like a section of it on the side. That can be a nice way to go. Paths, I've got my little path down at the bottom of the screen. So you can see right now my path is definitions. And then we're going to talk about breadcrumbs. Um, and if you noticed, a breadcrumb has appeared. Home about definitions. Okay, so starting off with menus. So I think that what you really, the, the mental model that will really help you understand menus on any website is to think of a tree and to think of all of the pages of your site as belonging in one single tree. Don't have more than one tree, fit everything into it, and at the very top is your home page. And one of the properties of a tree when you're putting all the pages in it is that you could actually only put the page in one place in the tree. Okay, so you can't put it in multiple places and you're not going to have multiple trees. It's sort of a, a, even better than a tree is to think of a file structure because ultimately that's much closer to what we're doing here. We're organizing pages into a hierarchical file structure and ultimately there's only just one outer directory, not more than one, because you can always put them together into one. And you're not going to have a document in more than one place in this file directory. So the reason that this, the file directory system works so well is because websites, static websites, really just are a file directory with all the different pages somewhere, and it makes a lot of sense. So you would have like your menus directory and then all of your pages within that. But of course, Drupal doesn't have an actual file system where it's keeping your pages. So we have to sort of try to emulate that feeling because that's a good structure that people can understand where documents are. 
Okay, so once you start thinking of all of your pages being part of this one hierarchy, this one menu tree, that doesn't mean that that menu tree, which is sort of like an abstract, maybe you have it in a document somewhere represented, but that menu tree is sort of an abstract, and it's not, it doesn't have to be the same as the actual menus that you have in Drupal. Because what you're really trying to accomplish in Drupal is to just display the menus in some certain way. So if you have a footer menu, and you have a couple of links in, in that footer menu that maybe don't correspond exactly to where they are in the menu tree, it doesn't even really matter if you, if you make the footer menu a real menu or you just put some HTML in a block and put that in the footer. If people aren't going to be updating it a lot, it doesn't actually ma matter. It's just a more of a display of a menu than that it actually is your real menu tree. But when you think of things as that there really is a menu tree and you try to make your main menu as closely match that as you can, then you won't end up with sort of all of these extra menus. So you, can, you see a lot of sites where when you go to the menu configuration, they'll have like the about menu and the academics menu and they have like a separate menu for every little section of their site. That's sort of makes a mess out of things because it's, it's just a lot harder to maintain and it's harder to think of things and remember that they're all part of one tree. However, if you were doing like, if you're using organic groups, um, in that case you really do end up having to have separate menus if you use organic groups menus. Um, you have to have separate menus because different people can manage them. So you have to be somewhat practical with what you're doing in Drupal, but still maintain this um, perfect menu tree in your mind. And I'll tell you how you can actually maintain that. Okay, so the biggest problem in terms of IA and Drupal is that you can put um, you can have multiple menu items for the same page. So nothing is preventing you from doing that. So you can just take, you can only put it um, a node in one place in the menu when you're editing the node. But if you go to the menu administration, you can add it as many times as you want to in all different places. And sometimes you're client or your design is, is really requiring that. So a really common example is that people will say that they want the contact page underneath the about item in the menu, but they also want the contact page to be in the footer menu, not under the about item, right? So the problem there is that a lot of things depend on the menu position. So, so one of the things that depends on the menu position is the active menu. So if you, once you start putting pages in more than one place, you, it, it's no longer clear how the breadcrumb or how the active menu, like which part of the menu is highlighted, which one it should base itself on because it all bases itself by menu position. So we sort of have like a cardinality issue here because you can only have one copy of a page and it can only really have one path because you can only see one path in the little path area, URL bar. It can only have one breadcrumb because you can only see one breadcrumb on it, but yet it could be in the menu in multiple places. So how are we supposed to base this one path or this one breadcrumb off of it being in the menu in multiple places? And so you see all of these... Um, all kinds of contributed modules that are trying to solve this problem in all kinds of strange ways. But what I like to, the way I like to think about it is just, we have this problem all the time in computer science. We have more than one of something, but we kind of only need to have one. So what we do is we just call one of the many canonical, and then that's the special one that the other things are based on, and the other ones exist, but they're not canonical. 
So in order to have a canonical menu position, I think the easiest thing to do is to just use, if you're using a node or some other entity, whatever you pick for the menu position when you edit that node, you can only pick one thing there. So let that one be the canonical one, if there's more than one. And then if you need to change the canonical one, just change it there. You don't need a whole other interface, a whole other modules. So this is a patch at this URL that does that. It's like a you know, five letter patch, right? So I just run that on all of my projects and I don't have any more confusion. Oh, it's stored on the menu item. So that's already actually happens. That Drupal keeps track of uh, whether a menu item is um, customized or not customized. It actually already has that data. It just doesn't really use it for much. So I just favor in the sort to use the the customized, right? Okay, so one module, if you don't know about it yet, that you should really get into when you're working with menus is menu block. So this is just an example of the types of stuff that you can do with menu block. So here you're seeing on this site, they have their main menu. It may or may not have drop downs, but it shows you the top level of the main menu. And then on the sidebar, it's showing you this section of the main menu. So since we're in academics, it's showing you the academic section of the main menu. So instead of making a separate menu for academics, you can put everything in one tree in the main menu, and then you can just set up a menu block and just you can just configure it to say, oh, always show the second level and lower um, depending on which page I'm looking at, which page, where that is in the menu, then show the right section of the menu. And that makes it a lot easier to get around um, big menus, as opposed to just trying to force people to use like huge drop down menus where they have to hover and like get around like multiple levels. So menu block is, is a great module. You should. Yeah, it just it, you just go to um, his question was whether you have to add custom code to use menu block. You don't. You just add that module and then you go to blocks and you go to add menu block. The configuration is a little bit tricky, but as long as you know what you're trying to accomplish, you can get it right. As long as you realize that it's possible to have to show different levels of a menu and it's possible to pick the starting point based on where you are right right now. It's pretty easy. Okay, so kind of wrapping up menus a little bit, just a couple of don'ts to do with menus. Um, handmade menus, again, I don't really have any issue with putting a couple of links for a footer that aren't in a real Drupal menu, um, but some people I've seen will make their entire navigation like HTML that nobody can edit. If the if you're working for an organization that really doesn't change its navigation very often and they want to have a whole committee to do it and deploy it, then I guess that's fine. But there's a lot of nice things about the uh, Drupal menu system that make it worth using, like how it, um, it you can translate it. You can also do um, at, it does access control automatically in the Drupal menu system, so you can put things into your menus that not all users have access to, and they just won't see those items in the menu. So you can kind of have secret extra items. So this is an example of a crowded menu. This was a client that I worked with a long time ago, and I, we just kept telling them they had too many things in their menu and they just couldn't seem to ever agree on combining things. So in the end result, they have this bar of things that just go across the top that you can barely even read because we had to keep making the font smaller and putting them closer together. 
And it's not a big, you know, this is the population studies center. Like you, you would think if they have that many things in their menu that they must be like a multinational organization with 10,000 employees, but it's probably just a handful of people who just can't um, agree on taking anything out of the main menu, right? Ultimately, people don't like to spend all day drilling down in menus to try to find something. They can, if you put things in normal places, like m most people will assume that people maybe would be underneath about us and that they could just go to about us and then find people. You don't have to put that in the main menu. And there's a lot of other things here that you can combine and make this a lot easier to deal with. Okay, and just wrapping up menus, I don't like to use a lot of contributed modules for menus other than menu block, but most people like to use admin menu just to make it easier to administer your site. And menu position can also be uh, a useful module. So menu position lets you take pages that you don't put in the menu and set where they should see themselves as being in the in the active menu trail. So for example, you could say all of my news items, I'm not going to put each news item into the menu, but when you look at a news item, I want the news section of the menu to be active. So you can set that up. Okay, paths are next. So not every not every um web framework calls them paths, but in, in Drupal we call the part of the URL that's sort of within the Drupal site, we call that our path. And it's also sometimes called a URL alias. If it's, if it's not a system path, you can have an alias for it. So like a system path would be node slash five and an alias would be about, right? So URLs, I think, are very important because they're actually visible on your site. So you shouldn't just you know, not take them very seriously and, and just focus on the rest of the page because a URL is part of what the visitors see on your site. It's part of how they interact with your site. And, and it's also an um, important part of your IA because you can you can use the path to show everyone, not just visitors, but developers and everyone else, where you are in the tree. So, um, okay, so paths should be restful. So sort of like an API should be restful. Paths on the internet are meant to be restful, which means that just having clean URLs, like Drupal promises you that it's going to give you these clean URLs that aren't going to be like question mark Q equals something, something. And just having human readable ones, which is what path auto module gives you, is not enough. Some of the other things that paths really should be is stateless. So stateless means that if you go to the same path again, that you'll get the same page. Right, so in Drupal that's not exactly the case because we let people log in and then they might be seeing a little bit of different things on the page depending on who they're logged in as. So we kind of make an exception to that in Drupal but still in general they should be seeing the same page. Um, because otherwise it's impossible to send people URLs and say hey I have a problem with this page or share it with your friends or whatever. There's no point in having a URL if, it, if it's not stateless. And you see a lot of um, web applications that are not stateless. So you try to copy a URL from some stupid web application and then when you click it later it doesn't take you where you were at all. So they're kind of, it's sort of a sin against the internet since the whole internet runs on URLs. If your URL doesn't mean anything, you don't really have a website, you have like a web piece of trash. Um, so they should also be hackable. Hackable URLs means that if you take away part of it between the slashes, that you'll go to sort of a, a parent page. 
and they should also be unique. So you shouldn't just have um, multiple URLs that take you to the same page. Now, one of the things that people get into a lot is that they have some requirement that um, that you have to show a different URL depending on how the user got to the page. Okay, so they'll say, so the people, same people say that, that want you to have the contact page both under about and not under about. They might say, well, if they clicked on about and then they clicked on contact, now I want the path to be about slash contact. But if they went straight to contact, now I want the path to be contact. Um, well, a lot of people fall for that and they start hacking all kinds of stuff together when really um, you want to explain that that's not the best idea because, it, because when you talk about a URL as an address, an address doesn't care how you got there, right? So my address right now, well, I don't even know what it is, something Barcelona. But my address now is not, you know, Philadelphia, London, Barcelona. Nobody cares how it was that I got to Barcelona, right? That's not my address, okay? My address is just where I am, right? And that's how URLs are. But there are times when you want to display the same information but slightly differently. So, so an example of that would be if you were, um, if you're selling tickets, concert tickets, and you have a page that's um, about a venue. But depending on um, how they came to get to that page about that venue, you want to show additional information on the sidebar that's relevant to them. So if they clicked on that venue after they were looking at Miley Cyrus, then you want to show them some more information about Miley Cyrus on the sidebar. So there's a few different ways you can do that that, that makes sense. Um, but So one is that you can kind of do like personalization and keep track of what the person was looking at um, separately from uh, how your IA is working. But another is that you could actually have separate displays of the content that had separate URLs um, that, that showed, even though they were showing the same node, were not the node display itself. So, for example, you could have um, a panels page that could accept as an argument who the artist was, and then it would always show as part of that page the venue information, but it would also show different information by the artist. So you don't always have to only display a node when you're trying to display a page, and then you can have more options if you need to do strange things with your URLs. Okay, so canonical paths is a sort of similar Drupal problem as canonical menu items. So this URL is to a Drupal issue uh, where the issue is that if you create a URL alias for your node and then you go back and edit the alias, it's possible to get into a situation where the alias that you put in when you're editing the node is not used as the canonical alias when you're viewing the node. So you can go in there and edit things all the time and it doesn't really have any effect. Because just like menu items, Drupal lets you have more than one path for a page. But ultimately, you can only see one URL at a time, right? So we have to, again, have some way to pick which URL is canonical. And so there's a little patch um, in that link that just says that um, whichever one was the newest path, I think, is that we're going to use that one as the canonical one. So at least we have, a, like, be, like currently in Drupal 7, there is no system for picking which one is the canonical path. There's no um, order by on the query that looks up the path. So your, you know, your results may vary for, for if you have more than one path of which one is actually going to get displayed. So I always use that path and that patch, and that did um, get fixed 
for Drupal 8. So Drupal 8 actually has working canonical paths. Another good thing about Drupal 8 is there's been a lot of emphasis done to make paths more stateless. So for example, in Drupal 8, if you go to slash user, it'll redirect you to slash user slash one. And the reason that's better than what Drupal 7 does, for, so in Drupal 7, if you go to slash user, you're just on slash user and you're looking at your account page, but it's, the path is slash user. So the problem with that is that you can say to someone, oh, I've got a, something isn't showing up for me on slash user. And you send them that link. But that's not a stateless link. That shows different information for everyone who goes to slash user. So if it automatically redirects you to slash user slash one, now you have an actual stateless URL that you can share with someone that makes a lot more sense. Okay, so path auto I think most people will be familiar with, and path auto does exist already for Drupal 8, but you have to get it from a GitHub project, uh, which you can find in the path auto issue queue. So a lot of people use path auto, but, but don't do a very good job at configuring it, uh, which is probably the most important part. So these are, so this probably is the most best tip that you're going to get from this whole talk if you didn't already know this, which is that you should, any type of content that you put in the menu a lot, you should set its um, pattern something like this. And what that's saying is that the URL of the page is going to be whatever its menu parent is slash title. So that way, whenever you add a page and put it in the menu, it will automatically have a hackable path that has the right structure. Um, so, for example, if you put the contact page under about in the menu, the path will all automatically be about slash contact, which matches the tree of where it is. So it's about slash contact. And you can also set these um, in a custom way if you need to. So if, if, you're, if the page is in the menu more than once and then you have to um, try to distinguish which it is, you could set your, your path manually to put it exactly where it's supposed to be in the tree. So because you can only have one URL, I think the most important thing of menus, paths, and breadcrumbs all working together is to have perfect paths. Get your paths perfect and everything else is going to fall into place. So another, so for the content types that you don't put in the menu, typically what you're going to have is the plural form of the type slash the title. Um, that's assuming that you have an events page that has a path of events. If the path of the events page was something else, then put that there. Um, so, as long, so you have to set up these patterns so that everything is going to fall in the right place in the tree. And if there's ever a point where you can take out part of the URL and it no longer brings you up to the right landing page, then there's something wrong because your paths aren't hackable. And you can always, if you're still doing development, you can always delete all of your paths and then regenerate them all and, and have them straight. Um, what I like to do is I like to set, in Path Auto there are settings for um, what to do if the path is changing. I like to set it to um, delete them all um, whenever the path, to delete the old one when you're making a new path alias. And then when I launch it, I have a couple ways to make sure this happens automatically. So the old way was that we would have a, a launch checklist and sort of the new way is I have this module called Habitat that lets you set different modules to be on or off in different environments. So, um, so I try to make sure auto that automatically the path auto settings change when, when you launch because you, the worst thing that can happen is that it deletes the old aliases when you're live because now you're going to lose aliases and that's really bad for SEO. Do you have a question?
Yeah, so he's saying the problem with this um, path auto pattern is that if you change, if the path above your page changes, then you're no longer matching up right. And I have seen, I forget the name of the module, but I have seen a module that attempts to fix that, although it sort of scares me um, what it's going to, what kind of havoc it's going to potentially cause. But I don't, I mean, I find that that doesn't happen that often once you're, once you go live with a site. Like, they really, once you kind of have a tree in place, it's not that often that they're moving some big section of it. And if they are, you can kind of deal with it when it happens. Um, I don't know. I haven't had too much trouble. Well, one thing to point out here that's kind of interesting about this is you don't even you won't even see this as an option <laughs> when you're when you're configuring Path Auto and you open up all the tokens. You won't even you'll see Node Menu Link Parent URL, but you won't see Path as an option. It's a secret option. <laughs> so like the best uh, the best token setup is like kind of a secret option. So uh, apparently you can always put, if you don't put path, it puts like the full URL, like HTTP and everything. But apparently you can always put path after URL in tokens. Um, some other contributed modules for paths that I use a lot, pretty much Everyone uses redirect module these days because there's always some reason that, that you want to do a redirect, especially if you're if you're bringing in legacy content and you have to add a bunch of redirects. Linkit is a module for adding links, um, mostly to the WYSIWYG as like a WYSIWYG button. But what I like about it is that it's it's smart about the paths that it puts in, so into the WYSIWYG because a lot of people have problems where um, clients are adding content on the dev site and they keep on putting in absolute URLs to the dev site in there. Or they another problem they can get into is if they, they put a link to an alias and then later on that alias changes and gets deleted. So Linkit helps, um, helps to make sure that they put in proper links and makes it really easy. And Pathologic is sort of similar in its goal, um, but it's actually an input filter. So if you add Pathologic to uh, one of your input formats, then it will automatically try to like clean up the links that people are putting into the WYSIWYG um, and try to make them make sense so you don't have those problems. So there's a lot of websites out there with really bad paths. The Drupal ones are usually not that bad because we have pretty good tools for paths to begin with, but one of the problems you run into is JavaScript-only links, separate mobile sites where if you copy a URL from a mobile site and you email it to someone, it doesn't take them to the same place. That's sort of a crime against the web that seems to be happening less these days. And then just unhackable paths where the path is just doesn't give you any context of, of where you are. Okay, so probably worst of all in Drupal out of the box is breadcrumbs. So the first, I guess, issue with breadcrumbs is you know, maybe shown by the name. I'm not sure if they picked breadcrumbs because they already knew it wasn't going to work, you know, because it's like when you go to a lot of Drupal sites, the breadcrumbs are, seem to be missing completely because the birds already got there, I guess, or they're missing. They, a lot of times you go to a Drupal site and the breadcrumb always just says home, like on every page, right? You're like, well, I guess the rest of the breadcrumbs are gone. So I guess that's why they called it that, because they're just going to constantly be missing. If you go to the, um, the website for this conference and you go to a session page or probably anywhere else, you won't find a breadcrumb, because a lot of people in Drupal have found that uh, 
the best way to deal with breadcrumbs is to not have them because then they won't have to get endless complaints that something's wrong with this breadcrumb and that breadcrumb. But a breadcrumb basically is just, to me, a human readable path. And that's sort of what I'm trying to show in these slides. So when it says that I'm now at home slash breadcrumbs, and then my path at the bottom is actually home slash breadcrumbs. I like to put slashes as like the, the placeholder between the sections of the breadcrumb because that reinforces the idea that the breadcrumb is really just another version of your URL. If you keep that in mind, then it should always be 100% clear what your breadcrumb should be saying because it should be saying the exact same thing as your URL. And if it's not, then that's a problem. So in, in Drupal 7, they base the breadcrumb position, the breadcrumbs on menu positions. Now that is a huge problem because like I was saying, menu positions don't have any canonicalness. So you can put the same page in multiple places in the menu and then the breadcrumb will just get be made on one of them. Right, And you have no way of controlling which one the breadcrumbs being based off of. So you have constant, I think in earlier versions of Drupal, it was even worse because the breadcrumb would only be based on menu position if, you, if it was in the navigation menu or something. It wouldn't even work on the other menus, right? It's like you would just really just never, the only times, the only place where menu positions, or breadcrumbs, I'm sorry, and menu positions really work properly in Drupal is um, on admin pages. They work great on admin pages. You'll be like an admin, configuration, this, this, and they always work great there. So maybe that's why they never really get better in core because they, all the pages that are in core, I guess they work fine, right? Because <laughs> it's just the actual websites that we build that have no functioning breadcrumbs. Um, so there's this, there's so many different breadcrumb modules out there. One of them is called Hansel breadcrumbs. Um, you can make custom breadcrumbs where you have to create your own rules for how the breadcrumbs are going to get made. Um, menu position can also be used for for breadcrumbs, menu breadcrumb, crumbs, path breadcrumbs. So ultimately, out of all of these, the one that I've really, I, tr I tried all different ones for many years, but the one that I'm really into for a few years now is breadcrumbs by path. And this is just a really simple module, probably does something really simpler, similar to path breadcrumbs and other ones, but all it does is it sets your breadcrumbs based on your URL. So as long as you make your URLs right, you don't have to worry about your breadcrumbs at all and they'll always be right. So it just kind of, so if my page was like breadcrumbs slash Drupal 7, it will determine if there actually is a page at path breadcrumbs. If there isn't, then it won't include that. And then it'll put your uh, breadcrumb to match your path, which is almost always what, how it should be. Um, the other one that I, I haven't tried yet, but I think might be possibly even better is menu trail by path, because that module says that it does the breadcrumbs by path, but it also does the menu trail. So that means it'll also show you um, which section is active in the menu. And that can also do things like show the correct menu block on the sidebar based on uh, based on where you are in this menu trail. So that one might be really good too. But I think basically as long as you forget about Drupal trying to base the breadcrumbs on menu positions and just base them on URLs, you will have no more problems with your breadcrumbs. So in Drupal 8, this is a good post by Larry Garfield about um, how breadcrumbs work in Drupal 8. It's a little bit super complicated. The bottom line is that they're based on paths now. So you, you don't, won't need an extra module and everything makes sense. I tested that today. It works great. Just get your paths straight 
and you're all set. You can use the same path auto configuration that I showed you in uh, Drupal 7 or Drupal 8. So basically, your, your process is for paths and breadcrumbs and menus, it's just the only thing that you have to do manually is set where a page is in the menu. If you set where it is in the menu, the path will come out right, and then the breadcrumb will come out right. And, and nobody has to really know anything or do anything special. Everything works great. So I keep um, an install profile. We keep an install profile at ZivTech called Bear. And if you, you can look at that or fork it or use it or whatever you want. Um, but that's where so I solve a lot of these problems that I feel like should be part of core and make things work well out of the box. So it has a few different patches that I mentioned for paths and for menus and fixing the canonical problems. And um, it has like the path auto settings already set right and things like that. So you can take a look at that if you want because I don't like to spend time on every project trying to get this stuff right again and again. That is it. Questions? I think you're supposed to use the mic, I guess, if there is a recording. I was just going to say again, um, a moment ago you talked about the um, breadcrumbs by path. Um, so, for example, when you said breadcrumbs in Drupal, the path would usually just be breadcrumbs Drupal because of things like in and off and and that it strips out. Does the breadcrumbs still follow that as well? So you'd lose those kind of... Yeah, well, no, because the... Um, the breadcrumb will build itself based on the menu titles. So it'll look up those paths and then find out what it should put in for the title as like the human readable version. So it looks it comes out looking right. Is it the menu title or the note title? Um I think it uses the menu title if there is one. Okay. I don't know what kind of magic it it's doing because not everything is necessarily in the menu. But like if you have uh, one node, uh, which the last fragment is always the node title, mm -hmm. transformed into a path, mm -hmm. and if you have a subtitle of that, then you should have again the same uh, parent path, so it should always be the node title one. If that's what you figure your path out with. Yeah, you can also do a couple of different versions of that path auto configuration. Like you can do, you can do one where it it takes all the menu items that are your parents and joins all them all together. There's a couple like different variations, but it's kind of mostly similar results. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's sort of the simplest is if you just take whatever your the parent path is and then add the title to the end. Um, but you can put like the menu item name instead. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, also, can you uh, say that try this pattern, and if that doesn't work, then try another pattern or something? I think you can. Oh, um, well, one thing you can do. One thing that Path Auto does do is you can you can put a couple different tokens in there, and then if some of them come out empty, it'll just skip them, right? So you can kind of use that. So, like, so if you put that um, pattern that I had shown, then and then something isn't in the menu, it'll just show the title, so that'll be fine. Um, but if you want to get into something more complicated with like, if it's this, then do this, then you can make your own custom tokens. Like you can make a, like hook token info, and make a custom token and put all the logic you need to do in there. Okay, um, I'm not. I, I'm not really sure. This question actually. So, from your presentation, you said uh, you recommend, like, all website just have one menu or uh, menu tree. Uh, yeah. The problem is actually if the menu grows too big, uh, what you think that's the problem? And plus, actually, the example example you show about the website, they have very huge, um, big menu. 
item collections, why do you not recommend them to change that? <laughs> <laughs> well, the second question is easy. I recommended that many times that they should change that. <laughs> so, yeah, they should definitely change that. Um, sorry, the first question was, who remembers that far back? So basically, menu is uh, very... Oh, well, the really big menu. Yeah. Yeah. So the menu, what I say, is actually very heavy cached. So if you... It's menu actually... If the menu tree grows up very big, it's really bad for people to change the menu. So when you change the menu, you have to refresh the uh, cache. That's what I understand. So I feel like why you suggest people... Um, the website actually only have one menu tree? Well, first of all, most sites don't change their menu that often, right? So maybe once a day, you know, it's certainly not like they're, it's certainly not like they're changing their menu like every five minutes and then it's wiping their cache. You know, it could, if, if that was the case on your site, then you have to, you know, look into special ways of caching that. But so typically that's not really like a big issue. Um, and also in terms of admi administering a big menu, I think there's a module called Big Menu that makes it easier to administer it um, when you go to the menu administration page and you can kind of open up sections of it to deal with because otherwise it gets to be hard to drag it around if it's, if it's huge. Um, but the main reason that I think you should usually just put things into one menu is because it makes it a lot easier to do things site-wide. Like you can just say, oh, site-wide I'm going to have this side block that shows the sub-navigation. Instead of saying, oh, I'm going to make 12 different sidebar navigation blocks depending on which section of the site you're in. And then if somebody wants to change the styling on them or something else about them, we have to go back and change all 12 of them, right? So I'm just trying to think of your site um, as much all the way through the same as you can. It just makes it a lot easier to, to deal with your site. Yeah, I think it, the a menu approach can be a bit of a problem if you have a lot of dynamic content that really shouldn't be in the hierarchical fixed menu structure. I think it's mostly for static content, I guess, if you do this menu. Like, you don't want to have a menu with all Facebook users or with all... Um, I mean, Facebook users are easy because they shouldn't be ha some hierarchical. It's just user. That's it. But there are other sites maybe where you have um, a lot of dynamic content, but that has some kind of implicit hierarchy, but it doesn't have this... Uh, this uh, fixed menu, you don't want to put that all in, in the menu tree. Right, so you don't have to put everything in the menu tree. Um, well, you don't have to put everything in the actual Drupal menu, but it can still exist in your conception of where it is in the menu tree, right? So you don't put every news article into your Drupal menu, but you know in your IA plan that they all fall underneath news. So you can make, as long as you can make your paths reflect where they are in your sort of mental model of the menu tree. It's okay if they're not actually in the menu. I think that, that works if it's just one level below the, the deepest menu link. So if, if they always have one parent, that one direct parent that is in the menu. Like, for instance, if you have products with a taxonomy, then at least you would have want the ta all the taxonomy terms to be in the menu. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you get one level deeper, like if you have one... Uh, level of terms that is so many terms that you don't want to put them in the menu and you want to make the breadcrumb based on that for the product pages and maybe the product has one a sub page where you see some aspect of the product I think then you no longer it no longer works with this menu position stuff well that's what I'm saying to do it all by path so just yeah. do the breadcrumbs and the menu positions all by path and then it doesn't matter what you actually put in the Drupal menu or didn't put in the Drupal menu and it all just matches the tree. Okay, anybody else? Okay, please um, hit the evaluation, unless you didn't like it, and then just don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you.